Hey everybody, Galusier here, and today I'm going to be doing another Pokemon card opening, but today is a little bit more controversial, because today I'm going to be doing weighted packs. So really quick, if you don't know what a weighted pack is, basically all Pokemon card packs have a pretty standard weight uh, where they're expected to weigh a certain amount. And if the pack is slightly heavier than expected, I mean by like 0.1 grams, then the idea is that there's, an, there's a chance that it's going to have a some kind of special card in it because, you know, like V cards and rainbow rares and all these things, the material that it's made out of, those cards, is heavier. That It's heavier than just a standard cardboard card. Uh, even just like normal hollows, like a like a rare, like a standard rare that's a hollow, is going to be very slightly heavier because there's a foil layer in the cardboard to create that effect, and that little bit of foil has weight to it. So there's people online uh, that you'll find mostly like on eBay and stuff that will sell heavy packs, and they'll list how much the pack weighs, and it's a little bit controversial for a couple reasons. Um, I'm sure a lot of people think that, you know, you should just open packs um, and get what you get rather than just, like, hunting for packs that are specifically heavy. But also, I, I feel like it's a little bit controversial because if a seller is weighing packs and selling specifically heavy packs, to get weighted packs, they would have to buy a fair amount, which means what are they doing with the rest of them? The assumption is that the lighter packs don't have as valuable cards in them. They're probably mostly normal cards. So they're probably not going to open them themselves. And if they're a collector, they're probably going to sell them off. So they'll sell them off maybe under a different name or maybe on a different site or whatever, you know, um, knowing that they're, you're probably not going to get any hits out of it. So. You know, there's there's definitely, like I said, a little bit of controversy behind it. Um, but I was definitely curious to see if I bought some weighted packs, like, how lucky would I be? Like, what are the chances that I would get hits out of it? So, what I did is, uh, I put a lot of bids on stuff. I didn't want to pay too, too much. I was trying to get lucky. So, the average weighted packs that I was seeing for newer stuff, to be clear, for Sword and Shield sets um i understand to a certain degree why people would buy weighted packs for like vintage stuff like if you're going to spend a thousand dollars on one pack of cards uh may as well spend twelve hundred dollars on one pack of cards that's heavy in the hopes of getting a hollow uh you're hunting for treasure cards obviously for those really old packs but for new sets uh you know there's again a little bit more of a controversy behind it but yeah, I, they're averaging like $15, I would say, generally speaking, um, depending on the set, some go for more than others. So I was trying to get a, a, a bargain, I was trying to get a deal on them and, you know, put in slightly lower bids. So the f not on purpose, but I got four heavy packs and all four of them are Darkness Ablaze. Uh, I wasn't actually specifically going for Darkness Ablaze, it's just what I happened to win the bids on. So the seller sent me the packs with little posties on it that lists the weight. And uh, personally, I consider anything 22.6 grams and more to be particularly heavy, but really anything above 22.5, I, I would consider heavy, especially if it's like this one where it's 22.57, that's really close to 22.6. But uh, this is the only one that I have that's below 22.6. The other ones, or 22.61, 0.62, and then 0.63. So I'm going to do them from lightest to heaviest. But then I also have some random control packs here. Uh, obviously, I have to open them up out of the cardboard backing to get the weight for it. But I grabbed... Basically, I wanted... I unfortunately, don't have any other Darkness of Blaze packs available to me right now, so I can compare Darkness to Darkness. But I've got a Battle Styles, a Vivid Voltage, and a Rebel Clash... And I grabbed two of each just in case one of them ended up randomly being heavy. Because <laughs> uh, I want to specifically open packs that aren't heavy. So that we could try to get a true sense of 
uh, what's going on and whether or not these are like what they're getting us. And because if the theory is correct, then also a lighter pack should not get us anything, right? So I'm gonna check my weight really quick. So yes, I bought a scale <laughs> to do this episode. So I'm gonna start by weighing an, a normal pack that I bought retail. I'm pretty sure I got this one from Target. And of course, it, it's a heavy pack. It's 22.58. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I have a non-heavy. Let me see if my other uh, battle styles is lighter. Obviously, I'm going to open that one now because now I'm curious. But uh, there it is. Yeah, that's super random. Let's try another one. Okay, so that one's 22.34. So that's that's a normal pack. 22.34, I would say, is normal. So now I'm super curious to see what's in that other battle styles. Uh, that's super random. That's so that's pretty funny. Okay, so let's start with a code. Can't can't weigh a code. <laughs> the code's gonna be what it is, right? Okay, so this, in theory, again, this should be normal right i shouldn't get anything crazy from this now obviously you're more likely to not get something crazy than to get something crazy so we shouldn't be surprised if i open a pack and don't get anything nuts we got i mean we got a hollow we got a luxray hollow out of it so that's, that's actually pretty cool but it's obviously not especially crazy uh so since i actually opened it and it turned out to be heavy let's just start with that let's do a little experimenting here let's Let's open up this random pack that ended up being heavy rather than the ones that I specifically bought that we knew to be heavy and see if this pack, which is clearly heavier than the other one. I bought both of these from the same store. I bought both of these from Target. So these are both retail packs. They were sealed in cardboard, so they obviously haven't been tampered with in any way, right? So what are we actually going to fish out of this heavy pack? Okay, so the car soul is my reverse and nothing. See, literally nothing. So um, at least in this particular situation, literally got nothing special out of it and it meant nothing. Let's try a vivid voltage. Especially because I only had four heavy packs. Like, <laughs> I didn't want to do a video with just four packs in it. But I also wanted to kind of, you know, try to some degree to prove a point. Okay, this one is quote-unquote light at 22.38. So let's give this one a go. So this should also have nothing, theoretically. This definitely takes the fun out of it, too. Because, like, I love opening packs just to see... I mean, if you're opening a pack that is supposedly heavy, certainly there's an anticipation to some degree where you're like, ooh, like this might um, have something awesome in it. And so there's a little bit of anticipation. But um, yeah, I definitely like, whoa, I definitely like to, you know, just, I like assuming that every pack is potentially awesome you know so i don't want to go into a pack like this where it's light and then think like oh there's not gonna be anything in it and then be correct <laughs> like that's that's not really fun for anybody is it um so that was a light vivid voltage let me weigh i have one more vivid voltage so let's try that so this is probably the only time i again i might consider doing some sort of weighing Okay, 22.37, also light. I may consider doing some kind of weighing if I was to do a vintage pack, especially like, I don't know. You guys are gonna have to comment below for sure on this one. Like I really need to know from the viewers like what you think about the controversy of weighing. But And I want you to <clears throat> weigh in on both like modern packs, like Sword and Shield stuff, and vintage like would you like are you against it for new packs because of what it does to the market but not against it for vintage packs because you're obviously uh trophy hunting more in a vintage pack 
Uh, are you like completely against it? Do you not care one way or the other? Um, I'd really, really like to know how you guys feel about this because uh, it's it's definitely interesting. But like I said, I don't plan to do this anymore. This one's slightly heavy at 22.45. And since I bought this scale, I did do some experimentation earlier with packs that I was opening, like weighing them. And for whatever reason, I felt like with Rebel Clash, um, they didn't quite have to be 22.6 to get a result. Like even 22.4 something might be considered heavy, but I don't know why one set would be slightly heavier than others. I think one of the sets that this might have a larger impact on is Shining Fates, honestly, because Shining Fates has the shiny cards, which obviously have a lot. Oh, there you go. Toxtricity, VMAX, and that was a technical heavy pack. Like it was 0.1 grams heavier than a normal pack. So that one panned out. Set him right there. I honestly, I don't, I think I have the Toxic City VMAX on, for Rebel Clash, but I'm not totally sure if I'm being honest. Can't remember. So let's try this other one. That's funny because I did literally just say that Rebel Clash can be a little bit lighter on average. Okay, so this one's 22.32, which is also the lightest pack of the day. So yeah, I don't know what would make Rebel Clash lighter. But for some reason, they seem to be slightly lighter. Again, just in my basic experimentation, which has not been extensive, but I have been messing around with the scale a little bit since buying it. I gotta get my money's worth. I bought a scale and don't <laughs> have no reason to weigh anything other than for basically this one video. But yeah, you guys will have to let me know because if, like, if you wanted to specifically see you know, like, heavy pack openings, like, you know, doing that, like, trophy hunting thing. Uh, I, there's a Phalanx V, and this was supposedly a light pack, but we got a V out of it. Now, I will say that of all the special cards you can get, the Vs, although they have more print to it a little bit, there's not a whole lot different from it. And that was one, th I'm actually glad that's happened, because this is one of the things I wanted to prove, and I only had so many packs to open to prove it. Uh, but I felt like a lighter pack, again, air quotes lighter pack, could pull a V. Because it's different than like a VMAX, where the VMAX, you can feel it. There's a texture to it. Like, it's texturized, which makes it special. Which means like, if there's certain cards that you're hunting for, like full arts and stuff like that, if they're not like a VMAX where they have that texture to it, will it actually be heavier? You know what I mean? Like, basically, I think it's only going to be effective in that situation, mostly for VMAXs and then, like, Rainbow Rares and stuff, which, obviously, Rainbow Rares are things that you're looking for. Like, in Darkness of Blaze, we have a, a Charizard that people would be looking for. Um, but you're still going to... If you're only opening heavy packs, you're going to miss out on some better cards, uh, like, uh, uh, like the... Um, Tyranitar V alternate full art, like that, there's nothing textural about that. That's a $130 card that you can get out of Battle Styles. So, okay, so this one's supposed to be 22.57. It weighs in at 22.56. I think, generally speaking, the consensus in the community of people that are weighing packs is a plus or minus of 0 0.02. If you buy a pack, that's 22.58, and it turns out to be 22.56, or 22.6. Like, that 0 .02 variance is acceptable. Anything anything of a larger deviance than that is not acceptable. That's That, at that point, would be considered by the community to be false advertising. Like, you portrayed this card to be heavy, and then it's not because it weighed in. Because, obviously, scales... Like, my scale is calibrated. I assume if you're selling these things, your scale is going to be calibrated. But every scale is going to be slightly different. You can't perfectly calibrate a scale. So, we're just doing the heavy packs now. So, every single one of these should theoretically have a hit. And if they 
do, at the very least, one of the questions that we would want to answer would be answered, which is, are you getting your money's worth? I feel like the answer would be yes then, and we'll talk more about the money side of it here in a second. Okay, so we got a hollow, but not anything crazy. But again, the hollows, I think, can create a slight deviance in weight because of the foil layer. So but let's talk about the pricing while we get into this next pack, which is supposed to be 22.61. And it's 22.6. So <laughs> that's two in a row now where I would say the seller's scale is 0 0.01 heavier than mine. Um, but the price. So... Again, these packs, I would say I was averaging about $12 a pack because uh, I was really working hard to get good deals on these. Uh, but I would say on in general, heavy packs are going to cost closer to $15, especially if you consider the fact that you're getting it from eBay. There's going to be shipping fees, uh, so on and so on. But um, whereas you know retail, obviously packs are like 4 to $5 generally. And then even in the resale market, in places like eBay and whatnot, uh, just like a normal, like a single pack like this would run you anywhere from 5 to $10, depending on the type of pack and the seller. Yeah, got a Crobat V on that one. And that's a full art, so it's got the texture. So that worked. And I don't have this card yet. So there is a good hit for you right there. That is definitely reminiscent of me getting my money's worth. We'll just put that right there. So yeah, so these, if you're comparing them to retail, these packs cost three times the normal price. If you're comparing them to the reselling market, because it's still pretty difficult to find uh, a lot of packs on, ooh, this one's 0 .01 heavier than advertised. I'll take it. But yeah, if you if you consider the resale market, these packs are still, on average, um, five to ten dollars more expensive. So basically, you're gonna pay like two to three times what you would normally pay for a pack to get a heavy pack. Um, so I would think you know, if the hit ratio is significantly improved, I think technically speaking. It's worth the money. So really the question does just come down to, again, the controversy side of it, which is, okay, it's worth the money to get these for the hits. Boom! Senna Scorch VMAX. <laughs> We're doing pretty good on any of these packs that weigh over 22.6. We're pretty consistently pulling good cards right now. Um, that first one was a dud, but that one only weighed 22.56. So this is... So we're, we're two for two on the ones that are over 22.6. This is my heaviest pack, supposedly. This is the one I was advertised at 22.63. But yeah, I, I think I think there's no arguing the value. Clearly, we're seeing that as I open stuff. Ooh, yep, right on the money, 22.63. So I think it really just comes down to the controversy. Like, is this something that you should do? I can give you my opinion of it. Um... And I'm a little bit torn because for sure there is a controversy here. And I think the biggest part of it is the fact that if someone is selling weighted packs, then they're also selling packs that they know are not heavy in the general public. And they're not going to advertise them as light packs. Let's be clear about that, right? Like they're just going to sell them as normal packs, meaning you think if you're buying them that you have a chance to get a big hit when you obviously probably don't. Like your odds are significantly reduced of getting any kind of significant hit. So that part of it, I'm against. And I would only, and so by buying these weighted packs, you're feeding into that. Now, personally, I would say that if I was gonna try to do some trophy hunting, that this is a good way to do it, but you, I mostly buy retail. I don't buy single packs from resellers online. At least not anymore. When I first started collecting, I did, but I got into a groove. I figured out how to find cards easier. So, oop, double pull. So I stopped buying online stuff, which means I wouldn't be victim to these weighted packs. Um, 
Okay, this is the last one, so I was going slow. I really want to see what this last one is. This is the heaviest pack. And we got a Salamence VMAX. So, it's another VMAX that I don't have. This was actually <laughs> very effective in terms of just getting cards. Uh, let me put this away really quick. So, from the three that were heavier... The one, you know, we got just a hollow. And that kind of makes sense, too. It was in the 22.5s and we got a hollow. And then all the ones that were 22.6 or greater. These are the three cards that we got. Two pretty nice VMAXs. And both of them have really nice, really cool looking art, by the way. And then, of course, the Crobat full art. Crobat V full art there. Um, these are great pulls. And then from the other from the other one that we found to be heavy that I just randomly have, we got another V Max. And the only thing that we got from a normal pack was a V, which again I didn't open a lot of normal packs. But I have a feeling if we waited a bunch more packs that all came in around twenty two point three or whatever, at most we would find a V and probably nothing else. A couple hollows, you know. So, yeah, I think, I think for sure, you know, if you're watching this video because you're curious, will I get my money's worth if I invest in some heavy packs? Uh, I think you will. I think you should also invest in a scale. They're not that expensive. Uh, you can read reviews. You can find a good one for less than $20 on Amazon. That's where I got mine. I think I paid like 18 bucks for this scale. Um, but obviously, you have to get one that's accurate to a uh, a hundredth of a gram, so 0 0.00. Like you have to get that second digit, like a 0.1. You know, that's not good enough. You need the double digit. So yeah, I will. Uh, I'll link my scale down below so that you can see which one I was specifically using. I I've seen this exact scale in photos of a lot of online sellers that are selling heavy packs. That's one of the reasons why I bought it. It seems like a lot of them are using it. Um, but yeah, so if your concern was, uh, am I going to get my money's worth? I would say the answer is yes, at least to a point. Obviously, you know, it's a thin line. Like it, the hunt is a lot of the fun. And if you're going to pay more money for heavy packs, knowing that you're going to have big pulls, why wouldn't you just pay money for the cards you're looking for? Like, obviously, you know, like. Yes, you're still hunting for cards that could be really expensive. Like in Darkness of Blades, like I'm hunting for a Charizard. That's a very expensive card normally. And the cards that I pulled are obviously not Charizards and they're not as expensive. So if you were specifically like trying to get the best card out of the set, maybe it would still be cheaper to buy some heavy packs rather than just buying that one card. But if you're trying to get cards like what I pulled, these various VMAXs, the full art, uh, for a lot of them, it would just be cheaper to buy the card. Most VMAXs nowadays uh, for sets that have been out for a while, like Darkness of Blaze, don't go for over $15. And that's, you know, again, what you're going to be paying for these packs. So, uh, plus you got to invest in the scale. That's, an, you know, that's more money. So, yeah, if you're trophy hunting for the biggest cards, financially, yes, it is worth it. But I, I still think it comes down to the controversial side of it, again, which is... Are we adding to some of the issues of buying? It's already so hard to buy Pokemon cards. It's so hard to find them in retailers and everything else. And a lot of times, you know, a lot of people do have to resort to online shopping for their Pokemon cards, uh, just given the current state of things. And are you buying with confidence? That's a big question mark. That's why, like, when I buy online, the only two ways I ever buy online is uh, number one, if the seller is very well reviewed, and then if I'm buying individual packs rather than like a full box, uh, they have to be in the cardboard backings. They have to be in like the actual like hangers. Uh, number one, because it keeps them more protected and you're more likely to get a PSA 10 level uh, card, but then because it's, it's more difficult to weigh those because they're sealed with glue. And I actually experimented with this earlier. I just didn't film it. But I weighed a lot of different packs that were still in the cardboard and compared that to the weight of the packs. 
and some of the ones that were heavier in the cardboard were lighter once they were out of the cardboard. So depending on how much glue is applied to seal the cardboard, obviously when you're talking about a hundredth of a gram, it makes a difference. So you can't really weigh those. So if you're gonna buy online, given what we've reviewed here today, I would say definitely only buy individual packs if they're in the hangers or if you can afford it and find it, uh, purchase a sealed, a factory sealed booster box um, because those are gonna be pretty straightforward. You're gonna get a certain amount of hits in that and it can't really be tampered with at that point. Um, so yeah, like I said, comment below. I'd really like to know people's opinion on this. So let me know what you guys think. Um, it was definitely fun to pull a lot of big cards in such a small, pile but um yeah i don't know i don't know that i would do it again okay so thanks everybody i appreciate the view and support as always and i will see you next time